Good evening. Put yourself into a better place. I'm Robert Gibbons. Day 13, and we are resurrecting our voice for the new world. I, uh, as always, I'd like to honor my mother, Dorothy, my father, Robert, my grandmothers, Percy and Maddie, my grandfather, Sammy, and Jethro Ashe. I'm so excited about this particular segment where I am resurrecting the voices of poets for this new world. Resurrecting the voices for the new world. And so I pulled some titles to share with you tonight. The first title I pulled to share with you tonight is The Good Thief by Marie Howe. The Good Thief by Marie Howe. Death, the last visit. Hearing a low growl in your throat, you know that it's started. It has nothing to ask you. It has only something to say and it will speak in your own tongue. Looking its arm around you, it will hold you as long as you ever want it. Only this time it will be long enough. It will not let go. Burying your face in its dark shoulder, you'll smell mud and hair and water. You'll taste your mother's sour nipple. Your favorite salty cock and swallow a word you thought you'd spit out once and be done with through half-closed eyes. You'll see that its shadow looks like yours, a perfect fit. You could weep with gratefulness. It will take you as you like it best, hard and fast as a slap across your face. Or so sweet and slow, you'll scream, give it to me, give it to me, until it does. Nothing will ever reach this deep. Nothing will ever clench this hard. At last, the little girls are clapping and shouting, and someone has pulled the drawstring of your gym bag close enough and tight. At last, someone has knotted the lace of your shoe so it won't ever come undone. Even as you turn into it, even as you begin to feel yourself stop, you whistle with amazement between your residual teeth. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, holy mother. Nothing, nothing, nothing ever felt this good. And the title of this poem is called Death, The Last Visit from Marie Howes, The Good Thief. Thank you, Marie, for blessing us. The next title for Resurrecting Our Voices for the New World. I pulled from her collection called Veil by Ray Armour Trout. Crossing. We'll be careful. Repression informs us that this is not our father. We distinguish to penetrate. We grow and grow fields of lilies, coal funnels. According to legend, Mama sustains the universe by yelling, stay there where it's safe whenever, when every star wants to run home to her. Now every single star knows she wants only what's best and winks steadily to show it will obey. And this winking feels like the middle of an interesting story. This is where our history begins. Well, perhaps not history, but we do feel ourselves preceded. Homeostasis means effortlessly pursuing something who is just disappearing. Three. Now here it is, slowed down by the introduction of nouns, Eastwood, Wayne, and Bogart, faces on a wall in Yuma. 
constitute the force required to resurrect a sense of place. Hunger fits like a bonnet now, something to distinguish for. On the spot, our son prefaced resorption, saying, You know how we're a lot alike. He couldn't go out on that day, but he could have a pickle out of spite. He crawled to the kitchen, demonstrating the mechanics of desire. Five. The sky darkened then. It seemed like the wrong end of a weak smile. That was what shocked us. None of our cries had been heard, but his was. When something had happened once, you might say, it happened once and for all. That's what symbols mean and why they're used to cover up envy. And the title of this poem is called and I love it. Crossing from her collection of Veil by Ray Armatrout. Thank you, Ray, for blessing us. Next title is by a dear friend, dear departed friend by the name of Marge Hauser from her collection called Fairyland Mail by Marge Hauser. The title of her piece is called Snow White. Snow White. Of course I understand. You had no choice. You used to be the fairest of the fair with unlined skin, bright eyes, and long dark hair. Your beauty was proclaimed by every voice throughout the land. And you were the one adored by all. And then, alas, she came of age. That grubby child grew up. Time turned the page and suddenly it was her star that soared. You had no choice. I know, I understand. She had to be removed, by, but by whose hand? An apple and a huntsman and a spell. Soon she be gone and then all the world be well. But listen close. Hear the derisive laughter you failed. There is no happily ever after. And that's from my dear friend, Marge Hauser, Snow White, Fairyland Mail. By Marge Hauser. Thank you, Marge, for blessing us. We're lifting our voice, resurrecting our voice for the new world. And I have engaged with this poet for many years. I've taken workshops with her. I have taken workshops under her tutelage, and she is an amazing poet. And I'm so proud to um, read this final poem. I think she is one of the epitomes of language and the use of language and resurrecting this voice for the new world. And this is from my dear friend, my dear friend, Cheryl Boyce Taylor, Convincing the Body. Convincing the Body by Cheryl Boyce Taylor. And I'm gonna read the title poem, Convincing the Body. Study your poems. And when you think you're going crazy, Lay naked on the earth. Cover your shame with praise poems. Cover the bright bay windows curved around a cruel day. Make curtains of your poetry. Cruise the sky, cruise the sky. Find the slight patch of sun. Stack poems. Two, three, five at a time on top each other. Add your tears. Make a bewitching violet poultice. Cover those wounds, child. Gather acacia leaves, a dash of sea salt, two unruly beams of light, two drops of blood from one left hand, wetting finger, a fountain pen, three diamond nibs, seven wads of paper. Keep by your bedside one flask of Kerouac and nine sprigs of Lord, three June Jordan candles, and two tablets of Clifton, ten wads of Neruda, three large jars of Perdomo juice, five reams of Bonaire agar, one skillet, 
two teacups, two steel pans of mountainous, garland of ah, 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 your reflection, study your reflection, use as mirror rainwater. Keep, calabash, fool, trace your mouth, lips deformed and bleeding, praise that mouth and swear, swear to love yourself, study your reflection. Watch your eyes, looking for crossing buffalo, clear a path, ten quick breaths, your heart, strike your heart, strike it, child, let it break, break, strike it, beat spontaneous poems, from wrists and hips and lips and fingertips, heart beat, violent, irreverent, basin blue poems. Beat poems from legs and chest and eyes and breasts. Now read, 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 damn, like a poet. And that title is called Convincing the Body by my dear friend, Convincing the Body from Cheryl Boyce Taylor. I think it's so wonderful to be in your company tonight. I'm just going to go back over the titles that I read tonight. It was such a pleasure. It was such a pleasure to read those titles. The first one was The Good Thief by Marie Howe. Thank you for blessing us, Marie. The second one was Veil by Ray Armatrout. Thank you, Ray, for blessing us. The next one was Fairyland Mail by Marge Hauser. Thank you, Marge. And the final one is Convincing the Body by my dear friend, Cheryl Boyce Taylor. We're resurrecting our voices for the new world. This is day 13. Put yourself into a better place. I'm Robert Gibbons. Thank you so much.